Hello and welcome back to 365 Days with MXM Tune. I am MXM Tune, the singer, the songwriter, video maker, Oakland native, and a pig lover. I'm also a big fan of history. I love untold stories, gross facts, and secrets, anything weird, dark, and funky from the past. So each day I'm going to share a few of my favorite deep cuts with you. So let's take a look at today's stories. It's 365 with MXM Tune facts every day so don't leave too soon i'm gonna teach you stuff no it won't be tough gonna go a year till you've had enough it's 365 on this day in 1979 a swine breeder in stamford texas sold the most expensive pig ever recorded for a whopping forty two thousand five hundred dollars the breeder, whose name was Russ Bays, sold the pig, whose name was Glacier, to a father and son duo named William and Myron Meinhardt, who were based in Hudson, Iowa. Growing up, Russ Bays had always wanted to be a cowboy. Born and bred in Stamford, he loved his entire life there and used to enter into rodeo competitions when he was in high school. He was a gifted bull rider and once agreed to a bet with a friend to ride 67 bulls at rodeos in a row without getting knocked off and he succeeded. Through the rodeo circuit, Bayes eventually made his way into the livestock trade, rearing bulls, barrel horses, and cattle, and eventually breeding hogs as well. When you're in the hog breeding business, the hogs need to be eventually sold, which is why Russ Bayes used to take his pigs down to the Southwestern Duroc Congress in Wichita, Kansas, and offload his animals at auction to the highest bidder. It only took one look at Glacier, a glossy brown-coated seven-month-old grand champion Duroc boar, for the Meinhards to know that they had to have him. Duroc boars are known for their distinctive coats, which are usually a reddish auburn color and for their droopy ears and calm temperaments. In fact, Durocs are known as one of the least aggressive pig breeds, and Glacier, by all accounts, lived up to his reputation as a big sweetie. Once the auction opened up, the son, Myron Meinhardt, began bidding aggressively on Glacier. As the bidding war continued, there were still two other hog farmers in the running around the 38,000 mark, but eventually both dropped out as Myron pressed on. Finally, Glacier was sold for 42,500, a price that blew the previous record for a boar sold for 38,000 in 1973 straight out of the Guinness Book of World Records. After being sold at auction, Glacier went on to live a peaceful life on the Meinhardt farm in Iowa, where he became their prized stud. One of the goals of buying a big, beautiful boy like Glacier had been to get a couple of handsome pigs like him in each litter of piglets that resulted, and then sell them off in an auction in order to recoup some of their investment. As word spread about the infamous and expensive pig sale, the Meinhardts also had the lucrative, if creepy, idea to make files of his semen available for purchase at the low, low price of $500. In a newspaper interview the Meinhardts did with the Santa Cruz Sentinel in 1979, Myron said that years after the sale, Glacier was very loose in movement, almost hyperactive in temperament, and never has had a sore or bad day in his life. After the sale, Russ Bayes' name was eventually entered into the 1982 edition of the Guinness Book of World Records, and he and Glacier held the world record for the most expensive boar of all breeds for a solid 18 years. He continued to be prosperous in the livestock industry until Bayes died in January of 2021, and he probably never forgot about Glacier, that big pig that launched his name into infamy. Glacier is just one pig of a big and beautiful species. Pigs are one of the most common barnyard animals, but there's a lot of misconceptions about them. If you think pigs are dirty, you're wrong. They're super clean, keeping their sleeping areas free of poop and debris. They just get the reputation from the dirt in the barnyard. If anyone's ever said that you sweat like a pig, they're also wrong. Pigs can't even break a sweat. They're also super smart. Studies have shown that they're as intelligent as a human toddler. They're also more trainable than any breed of dog. Maybe my next pet should be a pig. For our music fact today, we have a special guest, Dodie. I'm so excited to have her on the pod. I am a big fan of Dodie, big fan of Dodie's music and her as a person. And I'm really excited to have her here today to talk to you about a day in her life. On February 24th in 2018, I was on a European tour. 
This one I remember being a little different. I'd done a few tours and was still trying to figure out how I could be my small voiced ukulele playing self on a stage. I'd felt a little insecure with a big band and honestly I didn't know whether it was right for me. Obviously a lot has changed since then. I now love tour and miss it so much and the stage in my band is just perfect for me. Um, But this tour in 2018 was definitely a part of that turning point. Because we were touring in Europe, travelling costs were a bit higher um, to bring out my whole band and crew. So we stripped it down to just be me and my violinist and my cellist. So this had the effect of trying to amp up the feeling of energy I wanted to bring with my songs, but with minimal players, which I think really helped on working to sound bigger, but more organically, and sound more me. Anyway, on the 24th, I just had a look in my camera roll, I was playing Paris, Paris. And in the middle of my set, the whole crowd held up hundreds of paper signs that all said, thank you. It was such an emotional and beautiful moment so surreal to probably be so in my head about things and then to look up to a wave of gratitude like that. I just miss it so much. I miss it so much. And now for our last segment of today's show, I'm going to be looking into my own photo archives to see what I was up to on a February 24th in my life. February 24th, 2017, I received my first formal piece of physical manga. My friend Erin had just gone to Japan and she brought back a gift for me because she knew that one of my favorite animes is Mob Psycho 100. If you haven't watched Mob Psycho 100, I highly recommend it. It's super, super good. With her on her trip back, she brought me a copy of volume one for Mob Psycho 100. It's written all in Japanese. I can't understand a single thing, but it is very cool that I have it nonetheless. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you tomorrow. Subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts and follow at 365 Days MXM Tune on your preferred social media platforms. It's 365 with MXM Tune. New facts every day, so don't leave too soon. I'm gonna teach you stuff. No, it won't be tough. Gonna go a year till you've had enough. It's 365.